uh, today we'll be doing 2.13 and this is again another circuit but this is very similar to the project that we did 2.8 in 2.8 if you remember we pushed a button and one led was glowing and at that point of time couple of students asked me like how can i have two buttons or how can i have more than two buttons or more than three buttons and some of the students are successful in actually creating that but many students still have the same doubt like how can i add more buttons and how can i glow more leds or turn on motors or use any kind of sensor based on how you are pressing your button right so today i'm going to show you a project that we are going to do together and it's going to look something like this the circuit looks a little complicated because it has a lot of wires but in fact if you see it has only two buttons two leds and two resistors for the leds and two resistors for the buttons that we have and a lot of cables so when we start the code is also very simple and in today's code you will be learning how you can actually duplicate a code how you can actually avoid redundancy of writing the code multiple times but instead using the same block using twice so this is very useful when we go for higher programming languages or higher level languages so let me show you how this works so i'm i'm pretty sure that you guys can see my screen and you're seeing that i have put two but two buttons and what happens when i start the simulation is when i click button 1 led 1 glows when i click button 2 led 2 glows so that's all but the problem it is blinking is um, it is blinking very low is because i forgot to change it to 220 so when i start it now it should blink the same way how and it is blinking now this is the project that we are going to do and i'm going to show you step by step process to actually construct this and to make sure that this both the leds are working okay so you guys are going to work with me and you guys are going to start a completely new project and create a new circuit and name the circuit as 2.13 and after this we have only one last project so that is working on temperature sensor so that will be doing on thursday and friday and then we'll be done with this chapter okay so name it as 2.13 pushing two buttons i always put my name as underscore so i want you guys to put your name that's such that whenever you're taking a screenshot i would see who is actually turning in the project okay So the first thing that we would need is an Arduino board. So just drag it and drop it. And if you want, you can resize this. Okay. The second one is a breadboard. Right. So try to get these two in place first, and then you would need two push buttons. make sure it, that your push buttons so if you see that the breadboard is divided into half with this gray line right so make sure that first half of the push board is on the left side and the second half of this of the push board is on the right side so make sure that you put it in this way okay the same thing another push button maybe over here okay so now the things that you need to do are so make sure that you have two leds first led is for the first one and if you want to change the color you are free to change the color to any color that you want so here maybe i'll put green i'm not sure so what what do we more need we need two leds two resistors and both the leds are now getting connected with the resistor over here and change the value to 2 to 2 220 ohms not 220 kilo ohms 220 ohms the same thing take another resistor 
put it to cathode so the, this is a mistake that i just did it will not work if i do this it should be connected to the cathode okay not to the anode put it to the cathode cathode is the one that does not have a bent cathode is the one that is a negative terminal and take this cable and connect it to the negative terminal and color it as black same thing over here click it put it down and convert it change the color to black the reason why i'm converting this to black color is i'm going to make this ground so i'm going to take this now the whole line the whole negative terminal that you see over here is interconnected and every single thing is ground okay now the challenge is what is this anode going to do anode is going to receive the signal from digital pin 13 whenever you are pressing the button it is going to receive the signal from digital pin 13 so just put it over here since it is carrying the signal i am going to leave the cable as green color the same thing with this one the green led i am going to connect it to digital pin 12 you will understand in a minute why am i doing this so take a cable from digital pin 12 i'll leave this one as as, as green color as well the reason is i'm just uh, making sure that all the connections that are actually carrying some kind of signal will be in green color okay so now your push buttons need some power to work and they would need 5 volts to work that means i need to take 5 volts 5v is nothing but 5 volts and connect it to the positive terminal of the breadboard such that the whole line this whole line what what is highlighted right now is 5 volts to make i'm going to put it slightly over here to make this button work i need to connect terminal 1a to 5 volts and make it red color the same thing terminal 1a over here to make this button work I'm connect it to red color now this is done but do you think that the push button will just work like that we need to add a resistor for the push button to you know to to work the way that we want it to work so what happens is whenever i'm pushing this button your arduino board is reading the signal that some that the button is pressed and when the button is pressed you're going to send a signal to digital through digital pin 13 such that your led is going to turn on okay so i'm going to take the resistor and connect it to the black terminal okay and this resistor value must be equal to hold on i think i have to delete this I'll move this cable a slight little bit i'm going to take the new resistor and make sure that the value is 10 kilo not 1 kilo okay and see the connections very carefully so what i am doing right now i took it 10 kilo ohm resistor and connected it to the terminal 2a of the push button and connected it to the ground you remember this is the ground the negative terminal is the ground so it should stop at ground the same thing i need to take another resistor connected it from terminal 2a to the ground so this is the crucial point where most of the students go wrong so they connect it over here or they connect it over here you know and uh, once the resistor is in the right place your circuit is almost right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take another resistor connect it to the ground from terminal 2a and change the value of this one to 10 kilo ohms 
don't forget to change the value for 10 kilo ohms. Now, if you see, this is how your circuit looks like. But there is one last thing that you need to do. You need to tell the Arduino board, you need to tell the Arduino board that someone is pressing the button, right? And how is how does the Arduino board read that signal? By taking a cable, hold on. By taking a cable from maybe I'll take a digital pin two and connect it to terminal two B and change the color to orange one. Yeah. So whenever you press the button, a signal from the button is being received at digital pin two. The same way you have to do it for the other push button as well. So take another cable. The cable management is quite important. So make sure that all your cables are straight and they're all color coordinated. Making your cables color coordinated will help you so much in actually reading your circuit and understanding your circuit. So now you see what happening or what's happening is whenever I press the button, this orange cable is going to take the signal and give it to your Arduino board. And based on the signal received at the Arduino board, I'm sending a signal from digital pin 12 or digital pin 13 to the LED. So that means if someone is pressing the button, if someone is pressing the button one, red LED is going to glow. If someone is pressing the button two, green LED is going to glow. So this is our project. So the circuit diagram, it's done. I know it's slightly complicated, but I'm sure that I haven't done any mistake. So you guys can actually pause the video multiple times and then do it and then come back and verify. Okay. And if you want, you can take a screenshot of this particular frame and use that as your reference to actually build your circuit and make sure to color coordinate your cables that will make your work very simple. Okay. Now we need to obviously write the code. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to select blocks plus text so you guys can see the blocks completely. Uh, or maybe just the blocks is good. Okay, I don't think I can move this. So let me write blocks plus text so you guys can see both the blocks and the text as well. But this time we are only going to do the blocks because the blocks are available for this particular code. Okay, so the blocks are quite simple, quite easy. What you need to do is first, you have to create a variable and name it as button state. Remember this, the, the variable that I'm creating here is button state and it does not have any space between button and state. So you're going to set the button state to input. Whenever you're pressing the button, you're reading the pin. You're reading from the pin, right? So set button state to read digital pin, which digital pin that you need to read. So let's say this button one is pressed. It's bit, it's getting, I mean, the, the information is being sent to the Arduino board by using the digital pin two. So that's the reason you're going to select read digital pin two. Right? So this is the first thing that you need to do. So please uh, create a variable called button state and you're going to read the digital pin too. Then we limit it what we actually did here. If button state is equal to high, so you go to control, take if only when button state is equal to Take this and put it exactly in this uh, six shaped regular pentagon or hexagon, right? So now you take the value high and you put it instead of one. If button state is high, 
That means if somebody has pressed the button, what should I do? Send output set pin 13 to high. So what's happening? If somebody is pressing the button, pin 13 is high. Else, oh, this is my else. So directly go to output. Else, set pin 13 to low. Is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, hold on. I think I did a small mistake over here. Control. I, I should be taking if and else. I have taken the wrong one. So we'll have to pull this. I'm going to pull this aside and I'm going to delete the whole thing. Okay. Because the else was missing. If. If button state is equal to high, what is the first thing that I have to do? I have to set digital pin Oh, hold on. This is not the pin that I need to take. Yeah, this is the one that I need to take. So set digital pin 13 to high. Once you release the finger, once you release the finger from the button, you have to set the same pin instead of high to low. So this is a perfect code. So this is supposed to work. Now you see this when I, whenever I press this button, you see that LED one is blinking, but LED two is not going to work because we haven't created any code. But if you see that the process is exactly the same, but instead of having 13 here, we just have to have 12. Instead of read a digital pin three, two, we should have digital pin three. So what I'll do is I'll click on this and I will right click, right click on your mouse pad. When you right click on your mouse pad, you have delete two blocks, you have duplicate. I'm gonna duplicate it and then put it right below this. So this is the process of duplication. It's like copying and pasting, but the work is quite simple. Instead of digital pin two, let us see where our push button two is connected to. So if you see this push button, then uh, push button two is connected to digital pin three. And the LED is connected to digital pin 12. So we are going to adjust that in the duplicate code that we just created. So you're going to select three and instead of 13, you're going to select 12. You're going to select twelve. So now let us see your, how your final code looks like. Your final code is exactly the same block repeated twice, but with the change of numbers from two, you change to three. From 13, you change to 12. So now let us start the simulation and see whether the code is working or not. You go to the code, I mean, you start the simulation and the simulation timer, you see that it has started three seconds back. Now, whenever you click the button one, LED one is glowing. Whenever you click the button two, LED two is glowing. So this would be the end of 2.13, the project 